Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing episode two of my best of beauty for the year 2021. Episode two is always where I talk about my high-end favorites. So if you haven't seen the drugstore episode, I will have that linked in the description box down below. I have so much to talk about, so I am not gonna waste any time. Let's just get right into it. I love filming this series and I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. I hope you enjoyed the drugstore one. After this, I'm gonna be doing a hair, skin, and nails one as well with products that I use like in the shower and on my skin and in my hair that I've loved this year. So first, we gotta get through a lot of products. I discovered some amazing things this year. I feel like there were some incredible launches altogether in the high-end category and so many of them were phenomenal. Like. I fell in love with so many things. And even though I kind of made this disclaimer in my um, drugstore version, I tried so much makeup this year, you guys, and so much of it was good, but everything that I pulled for these videos are the things that I wore on a daily basis. So things that I just could not put down that I would repurchase over and over and over. And so let's just get right into those products. We're gonna start with brows and move all the way down to tools and like lashes and stuff. The high-end brow product that I discovered this year is the Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination Gel. I'm wearing this in my brows today. You guys know it's no secret that I wear the Benefit Precise in My Brow Pencil and the 24-hour brow setter like crazy. I wore those all year, but for new products from this year that I discovered, this is the only brow product that I fell in love with. I wanted something that would give me like super good feathery brows and this is that product. Like when you put this in your brows, it does not budge. It is more intense than the Benefit 24 hour brow setter and that's pretty intense. Like it holds your brows in place all day. This is amazing, I love it. A little goes a very long way. So make sure you wipe off the excess product on the outside of the tube before going in. And you don't wanna go in over and over and over because product can build up. But if you learn how to use this right, it is so good. I love it, it's in my brows right now, it's amazing. I didn't have like a primer, a new primer that I loved this year, but I had one that I used so consistently and it's not a new product by any means, but it's the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I used this like crazy this year and in addition to that, I also loved the Vitamin Enriched Eye Base from Bobbi Brown. These look amazing underneath makeup. They hydrate the skin. I just, I love them. They're great for underneath makeup. I feel like I use the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter a lot, but again, I didn't want to like repeat products in this video. So for primers, I would have to say these two for both the under eyes and all over the face. You just can't go wrong. And I would use this on other people when I did people's makeup this year. And it's just beautiful. Like the texture is beautiful. The experience of the product is really nice. And it always looks so good underneath foundations and powders. So I knew I wanted to mention those. My most worn foundation is definitely the Bobbi Brown Skin Longwear Weightless Foundation. This is something that I had used a few years ago and then I rediscovered it this year and I couldn't put it down. I'm actually wearing this all over the face with a couple of drugstore products mixed in. I'll have my entire list of products that I'm wearing in the description box down below, but I am wearing this foundation. I love that I can take this from day to night. It's very sheer, but you can also build it up. It wears so well on me and it smells really nice. The coverage it gives is really great, but it's not over the top. It still looks like skin. I just have nothing bad to say about this foundation. It's so beautiful. Beautiful. Another foundation that I wore like crazy is the Rare Beauty Foundation. This is one where I just love the packaging. This has more of like a soft matte finish. A little bit goes a long way. I love how this wears though on me and I, I feel like the shade match is so good on this product, which is always nice to find a shade that works so well for you. But um, this is such a good foundation and I used it so much this year. It's a really good product. I feel like Rare Beauty had so many amazing launches, but their foundation is one that really stuck into my routine. For more of a tinted moisturizer product, even though this is new, I feel like it definitely deserves an award from me. This is the Tower 28 Sunny Days Tinted Moisturizer. I have used this like crazy since it launched. It only launched a couple of months ago, but truly it's phenomenal. If you're somebody who has sensitive skin, Tower 28 formulates for sensitive skin. Also, this has a mineral sunscreen in it, which I personally really prefer for a tinted moisturizer, but they're hard to come by, especially in a good shade range because zinc, which is a mineral sunscreen has a crazy white cast but the shade range that they achieved with this is amazing and the coverage that this gives is amazing the way it wears is beautiful like I have nothing bad to say about this either if you haven't tried this yet and you're looking for a new tinted moisturizer especially moving into the new year I highly recommend checking this one out 
A really cool kind of a texture that I discovered this year is the Monica Blunder Beauty Foundation. I played around with a couple of like cream foundations and there were some that were really, really good. I almost put the KVD foundation in here, the good apple one, because I really enjoyed that, but I didn't reach for it as much as this one. So again, this is the Monica Blunder foundation. I use the shade 2 Zwe and I love this cream kind of foundation because you can really manipulate the formula and if you put more of a glowy base underneath, it looks more glowy. If you put something more hydrating underneath, it kind of shears out over top or you can really kind of pack and blend and you're gonna get more of a full coverage slightly more natural finish for your foundation. It's so beautiful. I wore this a ton when it first launched and it's just like something that added to my collection this year. I didn't own anything like this and it looks so beautiful on the skin. I don't know, I just trust makeup artists when they come out with products and things because they use this on like their celebrity clients and things like that and they know that it like photographs really well and wears really well so this product was really fun to discover and I can't wait to see what else she creates. I'm really excited for the future of this brand because I really enjoyed this foundation. Okay, so an old product that I discovered this year, and I'm so glad I did, is the Laura Geller Powder Foundations. This is the Baked Balance and Brighten Foundation. I mix the shades Porcelain and Fair. This foundation, you guys, is probably my like top discovery, I feel like, in the high-end category this year. Uh, mm, I'm looking down at a lot of my stuff. I found so many good things. But this product, I know it's been around for a long time, but the baked formula in this, the way that it blends and blurs and builds so naturally, so beautifully, it's perfect for every day. For those fuss-free, like you don't have time to grab a ton of different products, just buff this on the skin, it just blurs, it brightens, it smooths, it's beautiful. I love it so much. This came with me everywhere. Anytime I travel, I'd bring this for just those, you know, last minute makeup looks or those everyday looks. I feel like if I had to choose one, I would go with porcelain for a shade match, but I mixed them both and it's the best match for me. So that's that. I'm obsessed with these. They're so good. All right, I'm gonna talk about a corrector before I go into concealer. I used the Bobbi Brown Corrector. This is an old product. Like it's something that's been around for a long time. This is the shade Extra Light Bisque. This corrector, holy smokes. If you use a little bit of this underneath your eyes, if you have any sort of discoloration, you don't even have to use concealer if you don't want to. That's how I feel anyway. I still do to kind of cancel out any peachiness that this gives but it's so beautiful underneath the eyes. It's great for brightening. It works well underneath other concealer formulas. I like how it has a little bit of a tackiness to it. So I almost feel like the concealer grips better to my under eye area. It's beautiful. I love it. And I wish I would have discovered it earlier. This product, the Banana Low Lighter from Rodeal, is something that I really loved for every day this year. I love to just dot this underneath my eyes and kind of blend it out with a sponge or with my fingertips. And it gives you like a glowy, um, brightened under eye, but it's not super full coverage, but it doesn't have no coverage. It's a really nice, interesting in-between. It's a super unique formula. I discovered this initially from Nikki Makeup over on Instagram. I'll have her Instagram down below. Really, really love this product this year, especially for every day. I actually would pair this with the Laura Geller foundation quite a bit because it just added to that no makeup makeup, je ne sais quoi kind of a vibe. You know, if I was ever going for something more just natural and I just wanted to look really lit from within and radiant, I would wear this. Okay, another phenomenal, really innovative formula this year came from Jones Road. This is Bobbi Brown's new makeup line. I love her so much, love her artistry, love the way that she views people and just teaches people and educates on how to see themselves and how to like do your own makeup. Anyway, these are amazing. These are the face pencils. I have the shade one and two. I don't know how this product works, but somehow, underneath the eyes anyway, you blend this out underneath and you pat it in and it almost shears out completely. It almost disappears. Like you cannot see it underneath the eyes, at least for me, that's the case. It's got more of a dry formula. So you do wanna make sure you've got something pretty hydrating underneath there for it to blend out. But this is the best like concealer stick. I wouldn't say that you should use this on blemishes that are major, but if you have any like post acne scars or anything like that, you could use this. I definitely use this mostly underneath the eyes for every day when I wanted just to brighten my under eyes, but I didn't want it to look like I had makeup on. I feel like that's really difficult sometimes with products when you are going for a genuine no makeup makeup look and you put products under the eyes and it's like, 
you can see the concealer, you know what I'm saying? Not with this, you cannot see it. I don't know how it works. I love to mix both the shades. Um, one has more of a yellow undertone and one is more pink. Comes in a lot of different colors and truly one of the coolest products I tried this year. Another concealer I loved was from Rare Beauty as well. I find myself using this with the Rare Beauty foundation quite a bit. I'm so excited, by the way, to try the powder because I can't wait to see how that sets the foundation and concealer. Um, that's launching pretty soon, if it hasn't already, actually. Now that I think of it, if this video goes up, it might have already launched. Anyway, it's a really beautiful concealer. I love how this looked underneath the eyes. I love the applicator. I love the packaging. It has a really cool kind of angle to it. So if you're someone who likes to kind of chisel the sides of your nose or go down the center of your nose, I like this applicator for that. It's really cool. Such a nice concealer formula. I wore it a ton. All right, for loose powders, I had to immediately mention my Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder. This was my number one loose powder for sure from the high-end category this year. I tried a lot, but I used this the most. I'm wearing this all over the face today. Uh, you guys know if you've watched any of my videos how much I love this. I have two shades, Sugar Cookie and Cupcake. I definitely use Sugar Cookie a little bit more. Just because for me, underneath the eyes, I like how it brightens. But this one's really nice as well. I actually mixed the two today to kind of get a little bit of a peachy undertone in there underneath the eyes and I loved how it looks. But I love this. It blurs the skin, but it's super lightweight. It also smells really good. If you haven't tried this yet, I highly recommend it. It's beautiful. Another powder that I loved this year is the Rodeo Glass Powder. This is exactly what you would think. It definitely gives you almost a glass skin effect somehow. It doesn't have a super, super duper sheen to it, which, you know, I feel like some powders that say they're gonna give you a luminosity, sometimes it's overkill. This is perfect. I think it looks really beautiful underneath the eyes and all over the face. It just allows you to set your makeup without taking away the luminosity of your cream products. It's so nice. I loved this product this year and I'm really happy that I picked it up. It is more on the pricey end, but a little goes a long way and you know, you can always just use it underneath the eyes if you want. I just really enjoyed how it made my skin look. I've got some pressed powders that I fell in love with this year as well. Earlier this year, I picked up the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. This is such a good powder, especially for underneath the eyes. It really somehow looks so lightweight, but blurs and it brightens a little bit as well with the lighter shade anyway. And it has like such a fine texture to it. Also has a little bit of a luminosity, but not overkill either. It's so beautiful. One of the coolest formulas and something that like looks kind of basic in the pan, but once you apply it to the face, it's like, oh, like it really means business. This is a good one. For really brightening the under eyes, I definitely fell in love with the One Size Beauty Turn Up The Base Powder Foundation. Of course you can use this all over the face, but I have found myself using it as more of like a, a blurring powder in the center of the face or underneath the eyes. It's so good, I love this. I have the shade Fair 3N. I've heard people love it all over the face as a foundation. I actually have yet to try it that way. For me, it's great for just that super flawless under eye look and it has such a beautiful formula that gives coverage but doesn't feel heavy or cakey, which is great. In the clean category, the Kosas Airy Cloud Set Powder is so beautiful all over the skin. On an everyday basis, if you buff this out with a fluffy brush, it looks great on the edges and it just kind of has like a little bit of a luminosity to it since it is a baked formula. It's very lightweight. So I started out using it like that, really loved it. And then I saw Makeup by Kelly Ann over on Instagram. I'll have her Instagram down below. She started using this with a sponge to apply it underneath her eyes. And I just barely started trying it like that. And it looks amazing under the eyes when you apply it with a more damp sponge. Um, so I just wanted to mention that, but I've loved this powder all year and it just is a great clean option if you're looking to set your makeup but you don't want to feel powdery or you don't want it to look like you're wearing that much powder. This ends up being very luminous by the end of the day. So it's a really nice formula. Plus the packaging is just to die for. I love it. All right, we're moving quick here. I'm going into bronzer. The cream bronzer that I was just like, oh, in love with was from Makeup by Mario. This is the Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick in the shade Light. I don't even need to like explain myself here. I love this product so much. I'm wearing it all over the face. One of the best cream bronzers I've ever tried for tone and undertone for me. The shade range is great on this as well. 
10 points to Mario. In addition to that, I fell in love with his powder bronzer as well. This pairs beautifully with this. These are a match made in heaven. I just, I love how this looks. I wore this like crazy this year. It just shears out all over the skin, but adds the perfect amount of warmth and depth. It's amazing. I also, um, let's go back to creams really quick. I discovered the Danessa Myricks, mm, what's this called? I think it's like the Balm Contour or something. This is in the shade Light One. This is one of the coolest products ever. I love the undertone. This has more of like an olivey undertone, so it really shapes and like warms up the skin and it's got a really cool balmy formula to it. I really enjoyed this this year, as you can see as well. Um, such a nice product. Really happy that I ended up picking that up. If you want like a double cream and powder, the Patrick Ta Contour and Powder Duo, or what's it called? Yeah. Yeah, oh, I was right. Um, this is amazing. This is the shade Cheese Statuesque. It's the lightest shade, but they do have two others. You get a cream product and then a powder product. You can see how much I've loved this. Oh, as I dig my nails in it on accident. Love that for me. Anyway, you can see how much I loved this this year. It is so beautiful. I actually love how the cream is a little bit more of a cool tone. The bronzer on the top, the powder one is more warm tone. So it's not like an exact match. You get sculpting from the cream and then you warm things up with the powder. It's just one of the most luxurious feeling and looking products ever. And it sculpts the face like you would not believe. It's amazing. I highly recommend this if you're looking for a little duo. More recently, I picked up the Dior Forever Natural Bronzer in the shade four, and I haven't stopped using it literally since I bought it. This is so beautiful as well. It does have a little bit of a scent to it, but it doesn't last on the skin. I also really love the packaging. It's like squishy, which is so cute. Um, but this is such a good tone and undertone for me. Um, having fair skin and being heavy handed with bronzer. I have a hard time finding bronzers that don't look like too much on me and this definitely doesn't. I'm obsessed with this right now. Even though it's newer, I had to put it in here cause it's like, one of the best bronzers at Sephora I feel like I've ever found, so love that. I have so many more products to talk about. If you need a snack, pause the video, go grab one, because we're gonna keep chatting all things makeup. So we're moving into blush now. Let's do cream blush and then powder. So I loved the Makeup by Mario cream blush in the shade Pale Petal. I was wearing this for a while, for a hot minute, whenever this launched, was that in the summertime? I don't know, it's such a good cream blush. It has a little bit of a golden pearl to it. So I would use this on the cheeks and I would actually use it on the lips as well and I loved doing that, so nice. The Stila Convertible Color Cream Blush in the shade Lilium is so good. This was like one of my favorite cream blush discoveries this year. I actually had used this formula years ago in the shade Peony and I decided to revisit it this year and I'm so glad I did. This is one of the best cream blushes I've ever tried. It works great on top of your powder products if you are someone who likes to layer creams on top of powders. Um, but also you can use it with creams obviously as well. It's so nice and the color is great for every day. I also discovered a cream blush from the brand Say. It is such a nice formula. This is the peachy tone. So they have a few colors, but the peach one was a go-to for me for every day this year. A little goes a long way. I feel like this also blends on top of the skin beautifully and you can layer it on top of powder if you would like to, um, but it's just such a good, very pigmented, but very soft focusy type of a cream blush. It's beautiful. I love that. A cream blush that I feel like took the blush world by storm, in my opinion, is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Cream to Powder Blush Stick in the shade Swoon. This color, this color, the formula is amazing as well, but this color is something that really added to my collection, and I swear, I have hundreds of blushes. Like, I think I own every blush probably that ever exists. That's an exaggeration, but kind of. Like, I collect blushes. Kind of like I do lip products, but this is just so good, you guys. This is such a beautiful pop of color. In the spring and summer especially, I was wearing this like crazy. Actually, did this launch in the summer? I don't know. Whenever it launched, I was wearing it on a daily basis. It's such a good color. Moving into powders, I actually have a blush palette from Jaclyn Cosmetics that I could not stop using. I loved this entire line that she dropped this year. The Rouge Romance Collection. This is the Rouge Affair palette. So this is actually the Cool Tone palette. I found myself using this more than the Warm Tone palette because I could use most of these shades. I just really love how you have a little bit of a pop of pink. The formula in here is amazing. You also have like a really great everyday color here and here, something that's bright. And then these two are so fun as well if you really want a punchy kind of blush moment. 
I think she did just the most phenomenal job with this palette and with that whole collection. So I knew this was gonna be in this video when I was making my list, it's just amazing. This is probably my most worn single powder bronzer this year. This is also from Makeup by Mario. He just really floored me this year with his products. This is the Soft Pop Powder Blush in the shade Mellow Mauve. I bought this one and I actually, I still need to try more shades of this blush because I love the formula, but I just love this one so much I just haven't stopped using it. I'm wearing this all over the face right now, at least on this portion right here. I did layer another one in my drugstore video if you saw that you'll know which one I'm talking about, but such a good everyday blush. It has a tiny bit of a sheen to it, but nothing, you know, intimidating, obsessed with it. Something that has a little bit more of a glow to it, but is just such a foolproof one and done product. And I'm hoping that I can find this. I think this is limited edition, but I'm putting it in here anyway. It's the Gen Nude Blonzer. I'm saying that right, it's Blonzer. In the shade Kiss of Pink. This was such a staple for me this year. I loved applying it to the apples of my cheeks. It kind of gave me just like that lit from within glow on the apples of the cheeks without looking overdone. It's so gorgeous, I love that. Um, another blush that I'm obsessed with is the Pat McGrath blush in the shade uh, Flirtatious. This is actually the only one that I have, but I love this because it's a mauve tone. I find that it works great with any sort of eye look, whether you're doing something super glam or for every day. I love this. It's just, oh, it's such a good color. I almost feel like it looks almost boring in the pan, kind of, but when you apply it to your face, it's like, oh, it's heavenly. It's so nice. I also really love the Kylie Cosmetics Pressed Powder Blushes in two shades, especially Winter Kissed. This is one that I loved to layer on top of other blushes in the spring and summer, like right here to just kind of add a little bit more of a pop. I could actually wear this now that it's winter and it would probably look so nice with this look that I'm wearing, but such a good, really cool, unique color. And yeah, I really loved that. And um, after that, I bought the shade Pink Power, which I'm also really enjoying as well. So love those two. I had never tried those two shades. I know for sure I never tried Winter Kissed until this year and I'm pretty sure not Pink Power either. These are the new formula when she relaunched her brand this year, but both amazing shades. All right, we're moving into highlights now. I definitely have to give a shout out to my Benefit Dandelion Twinkle Highlighter. This was probably my most worn single highlight this year. I'm actually wearing it all over the face. I do have a drugstore product on top, so be sure to check out my um, list of products that I'm wearing to see what that is. But this is the Benefit Dandelion Twinkle. It's just like the best soft focus baked highlight. It's just, it's nothing too crazy, but it's just so nice. I love this. I love how it has a little bit of like a hint of pink in the undertone, it's so pretty. And it's great for every day. I use that like crazy. Another highlighter that's actually pretty new to me, but I haven't stopped using this either. Now this is one that's definitely more blinding, but you only need the tiniest bit. So I've warned you, you do not need a lot at all. But the Aryan Beauty highlighter in the shade Miss Mercury, like it is one of the most beautiful highlighters that I've ever put on my face. It's so nice, but again, do not overdo it, at least for my preference. I don't like to go overboard and you just don't need to with this because you get so much payoff with just one dip. When you apply this to your face, it melts into the skin and looks pretty much blinding, but without any effort. It's so beautiful, I love this. I also really loved the packaging of it. I think it's so cute. So I wanted to mention that. A product that really surprised me this year, it actually took me a minute to like finally try this out after it launched, but it's from Persona Cosmetics. It's the Highlight Multi Stick. I feel like because I looked at it and I was like, oh, that looks kind of cute, but maybe because of the more taupey color, I was like, oh, I don't know if that's gonna match or not. This is one of the most beautiful, balmy products. It's just, you can't even really see it. You Oh, you can, right there. So it just is a balm and it has little gold flecks in it, but you don't really see those on your face at all. So I love to take this on my fingertips and just apply it to the high points of the face and it amplifies any highlight that you have underneath. You can also wear it by itself and it just gives you a very beautiful lit from within glow without any color, which is kind of nice. Like there's some situations where I need a product like that and this is one that works really well. It doesn't break up the foundation or powders underneath if you're wearing something under and it's so beautiful. It's so unassuming when you look at it, you're like, I don't know. And then you put it on and it's like, oh, like it's a really good product. 
Okay, friends, are we ready to talk about eyeshadow palettes? I didn't have one single drugstore eyeshadow palette that I was head over heels for. And then as I was making my high-end list, I was like, well, this is why. Like, I don't think I had time to try or fall in love with other drugstore palettes because of these. There were so many phenomenal palette launches this year. Whew, okay, let's get going. I really fell in love with the mini retro palette from Natasha Denona. You can see how much I love this. This is such a good one and done little mini palette. I used every single color in here. I love that it's more cool toned. I love that I could create almost a 60s inspired vibe with this palette. So obsessed with that. Later in the year, in spring, and I'm mentioning this anyway because I'm praying that she brings it back when she relaunches her brand. This is KKW Beauty's matte eyeshadow palette, the Matte Mauve. I have never loved a matte palette more than this. I am obsessed with this palette and I'm gonna just briefly talk about it because I, you cannot get it right now. Um, but I hope she brings this back because it was just one of the most beautifully thought through color stories and the formula is great. I wore this like crazy. A matte palette that is still available that I love so much is the Makeup by Mario Master Mask. Now this one is more of a warm toned palette Maybe there's some neutral shades in there too, but it's definitely more on the warm tone side. So good though for every day. If you love matte shadows or if you're a makeup artist, you definitely need this in your kit because it is just foolproof. Like it seems like something we might all have, but Mario is so good with tones and undertones and he creates things that really flatter people. And so I find this to be the case with this palette as well. And I've used it like crazy. Um, something that's a neutral palette as well, but has really fun textures in it is this one from Patrick Ta. Patrick Ta just, he launches the best stuff. I love his brand. This is the Major Dimension eyeshadow palette and you'll see it's got the cream products up here, which is so cool. And then you've got some really interesting matte textures here and then some sparkly ones. You also have some metallics. This palette, if you're looking for a luxurious feeling and looking neutral palette, look no further. This is gonna make you feel like a queen every time you wear it. The palette that floored me and inspired me the most this year is the ABH Norvina Volume 5 palette. This is my very, very first Norvina palette that I ever purchased this year and I love it. This is what I'm wearing all over the eyes. So if you've been wondering, it's all this palette. I think this is my number one palette if I had to pick just because it just inspired me. I love this palette. I know that there's like purples in here, so don't let that intimidate you. If you block out some of those bright purple shades, it's actually a very wearable, more neutral palette. It leans more on the mauve side though, so be aware of that. Like even if you do a more wearable look, it is gonna lean more mauve, but that's what I love about it. I love the pressed glitter in here. I love the mattes, the shimmers. I just, it's hard for me to find a mega palette like this where every single shade inspires me and that's this palette. I think that this formula is phenomenal. I just, I cannot say enough good things about this one. More recently, the Rose Quartz palette from Huda Beauty launched and I had to put it in here because I think this is taking the eyeshadow palette world by storm right now. And for a good reason, it's so beautiful. Um, similar energy as the ABH Norvina, but a little bit more subtle and a little bit more Mm, like ethereal, which I really love, but I've been really enjoying this. I love how there's mattes, there's really fun textures in here, and the color palette is something that I feel like flatters me a lot and inspires me. I also wanted to quickly mention, and hopefully this is still around, if not, I'm so sorry, so it's gonna be brief, but I couldn't not put this in here, the NARS Climax Eyeshadow Palette. Why did they make this limited edition? I don't understand. This should never be a limited edition. If anyone knows anyone who works at NARS, please send them my message of ringing this back forever because this is one of the best palettes of all time. The shimmers in here, the mattes in here, the color story, oh, it's so good and it's so flattering on everyone. I've put it on myself, I've put it on my sisters, everybody loves it. We need this, please NARS, please bring this back forever. It's going to be your best selling palette, okay? If you guys know me, you know I don't really wear eyeliners that much. However, I discovered this pencil this year. I'm actually wearing this one today. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Super Nudes Liner Duo. I love how I get a dark brown on one side and then like a more nude on the other side. I am obsessed with this. I love the fact that I get a dark brown and a nude because when I do wear eyeliners, I wear a brown and a nude, okay? Like this is just the best. I also really love the brown and nude eyeliner from Patrick Ta. This one's more bronze, I should say. It's the bronze color and I loved that and I got so much use out of the cream shade too, so had to mention those. 
For an everyday soft wing, when I chose to wear a wing, I loved the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade Endless Cacao. This is a really beautiful, just soft taupe shade. So it gives you like a barely there eyeliner look. You can also use this on the lips as more of like a contour, but I found myself using it on the eyes a lot. So really loved all these eyeliners. I'm obsessed. Um, I use them all year. They're so good. For mascara, my number one high-end mascara this year is by far the Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara. I'm wearing this on my top lashes. I do have some falsies that I talked about in my drugstore video, um, so be sure to watch that if you haven't yet. But this is just one of the best volumizing, lifting mascaras ever. It doesn't smudge or flake, and it's clean, so you guys have heard me say so much about this this year. I just love it. Another mascara that I'm obsessed with is the Lash Idol Mascara from Lancome. Does not smudge or flake either. I wore this like crazy. I love the wand. I love how it applies on the lower lash line especially, but also the top. It's great for every day. I'm obsessed. It's so good. These two are so good. I love these. All right, I have a lot of lip products to talk about. And I feel like I have a lot of favorite lip products in general. So please don't be shocked if there's something that I've talked about recently or in the past this year. Um, in any category, honestly, where it's not in this video. Again, I'm just trying to narrow it down as much as possible to the things that I was grabbing like every single day, like things that I just was so, so overly in love with. So I have some lip liners I'm gonna share with you first. The most used, I would say, is the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Cheat. Oh, this one is so good. This one and then the drugstore, uh, well, what's it called? NYX Nude Beige, those two, my number one lip liners this year for sure. And they're kind of similar, which is funny, but love this. It's phenomenal. It looks so good with any lipstick. I just, I don't know what took me so long to try this, but I'm so glad I did. I also wanted to give a nice shout out to Lisa Eldridge as a brand for lip products. Just so good, so inspiring. I love her so much. And I wanted to specifically, actually, let me swatch these. I'm gonna swatch Iconic Nude for you here from Charlotte Tilbury. I wanted to share my favorite shade right now from Lisa Eldridge's line and one that I feel like so many people could really use and love and that is the shade Fawn. So I'm gonna swatch her pencil. There it is right here. So it's got a little bit more of a peachy undertone compared to the Charlotte Tilbury. And I'm gonna swatch the Fawn lipstick next to it. This is one of the most beautiful nude lipsticks ever. I love it, look at that. I think they're so nice. And I love how they're slightly darker in the lip liner than the lipstick. So you can kind of create a little bit more of dimension, which I think is so beautiful. I also fell in love with the NARS um, Soft Matte Tinted Lip Balm in the shade Unrestricted. This, oh, uh, the way that they executed a soft matte tinted lip balm I mean, they really did it. This is what it looks like. It's so good for every day if you're wanting more of a mattified look. I wore this a lot in the fall on an everyday basis because I wanted more of that blurred look. Such a good product, I'm obsessed with that. A lipstick that I recently tried, I'm actually wearing today, but I had to put it in here because I've never loved a lipstick color more than this. It's the Makeup by Mario lipstick in the shade Erin. I will swatch it here. This is the most beautiful, cool toned nude lipstick. I'm just, I'm beyond obsessed. And this paired with Iconic Nude is iconic. Like I've worn it every single day. That lip combo is just, it's to die for. Moving into glossy products, I had to give another shout out to Fawn Beauty's Gloss Serums. I cannot get enough of these. Let me swatch a staple for you. I know I've talked about this like crazy, but truly these glosses are so beautiful, great for every day, but also for more glam looks. Like I'm wearing this staple shade right now and it is so nice and it looks great and so luxurious, but you can also wear it on a daily basis because they're so comfortable. So here's that shade swatch. It looks a little bit warmer on the hand by itself because I did layer it on top of the Erin lipstick, so it kind of neutralized it. But anyway, love those glosses. If you have not tried them, please do yourself a favor and try them. Another balmy gloss that I love and I've talked about recently, well, I've talked about them all year, but I also just barely talked about them in a video, the Bare Minerals Mineralist Gloss Bombs in the shade Ingenuity and Heart. I love both of these. Let me swatch Ingenuity. There's that one right here. This one has a little bit of a pearl to it. It's so beautiful. And then we have the shade Heart, which is like a nice mauve. 
So there's the shade Heart. I love both of these. I use them on a daily basis. I also am so in love with the Tower 28 glosses. I know I just barely talked about these as well. I love the shade Chill, which is like a clear one, but I'm gonna swatch the shade Coconut for you. This is by far my most worn shade. It's a beautiful pink. I love to wear this by itself all over the lips. I love the formula of these, the shine that it gives, the nourishment that it gives the lips. It's so beautiful. I also really loved the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm in the shade Vanilla Beige. I just barely posted a video um, about my favorite winter lips and half of these products are in that video. So if you haven't seen that yet, I will have that link down below as well because I swatched them all on my lips so you can kind of see what they all look like. Here's the Lip Butter Balm that didn't swatch very well because it's truly more of a very sheer tinted lip balm. There, I kind of sheared it out a little bit. So nice though, like for an everyday situation. I love this one. And then I also had to mention two of my favorite Dior lip glow shades that I found this year. Um, the shade Beige is so nice. Now, I don't know if these are gonna swatch well, but I'm gonna try. Hmm. There's Beige. <laughs> they definitely look better on the lips, but I'm obsessed with this formula. It's so great. These live in my purse. I've talked about them so much, so I'm not gonna bore you with that. But also I have the shade Rosewood, which is a really nice, more rosy tone, which you can see right here. These look very faint on my hand, but they kind of like, mix with your natural pH in your lips and they look so beautiful on the lips. So those are all the lip products that I loved this year. I mean, I loved so many lip products, but those were definitely by far my most used. I'm just wiping them off before I accidentally smear them anywhere. Okay, for setting spray, I have one setting spray and that is the Benefit Professional Super Setter Setting Spray. I'm wearing this all over the face today. I love how fine the mist is and I feel like it really blurs the skin somehow. I feel like we all wanted to try this because of Tati. She talked about this a few months back and I actually had been sent it in PR but I hadn't tried it until I saw her rave about it and so I decided to try it and I love it. It is so beautiful. I truly feel like somehow it blurs, which I've never really had a setting spray that does that. Most of the time it just kind of locks things in or makes things more dewy. This one doesn't mattify like in a tightening way, but it just kind of airbrushes your face in my opinion. It's so good, I love it. And it smells really nice as well. Okay, we're moving into some tools that I just couldn't live without this year. Starting with my Sigma Switch, this little best friend of mine, my goodness, it lived on my desk as soon as I received this. And I just love how you can take this and take an eyeshadow brush or any brush and just buff the product into this and it completely cleans your brush. So for me, filming three videos a week, I'm somebody that like really, really used this like crazy. It was so nice to be able to just buff the color off and then use the same brush and dip into the same palette. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I love it. I also love the Rare Beauty brushes. These shapes are so nice. I love how the foundation brush kind of curves and also the concealer brush as well. I used these to death this year and I just will continue to. I think they're so innovative, the shape, and they feel so luxurious. I love those. Um, Patrick Ta created a really beautiful brush with his duo, the contour and bronzer duo that I showed you, and I love it. It's seriously so perfect for etching out the cheekbones right here. And also because of the fan shape, you can really like blend, like lay it flat and just blend into the hairline, blend it along the jaw, blend it down the neck. It's such a cool shape and I feel like it really adds to my collection. So I love that. I also love this Makeup by Mario F2 brush. It's the bronzer and blush duo and the way that it just like, oh, I don't know, just applies the product first of all, but also the way that it blurs and blends. I love the tapered end on both sides. The blush brush, when you press it on your cheeks, it just fans itself out. This is an amazing double-sided brush that I loved all year. And then I also wanted to quickly mention some lashes that I loved. And you guys know, I don't wear lashes a ton, but when I do, I usually like individual lashes. And in this case, I really enjoyed the Swede and Nikki makeup lashes. I have a video where I show you how I applied these and I showed you um, how they look on my eyes. I'll have it linked down below if you're wanting to know what they look like, but they're so beautiful and I love the shape of them. They look so natural, but also they really have quite the impact, which I love because I sometimes don't wanna always have a super bold lash look, but I want to fill in the gaps or just add something special to my eye look. And anytime I wanna do that, I grab these. So I love them. 
Guys, that completes this video. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my high-end favorites for 2021. Of course, I would love to hear in the comments down below what you guys enjoyed this year. And I tried so many phenomenal products, both drugstore and high-end, and these were the ones that I was truly floored by and that I didn't just like, but I used like genuinely on a daily basis. So I hope you enjoyed seeing all those products in one place. Again, I will have everything listed and linked for you guys in the description box down below. Below. Let me know if you've tried any of these products and what you think about them And if there's something that I didn't mention that you feel like you discovered and loved in the high-end category this year Be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know I would love to read through them and see what you guys loved But these are by far my favorites stay tuned for my hair skin and nails video coming up next and if you wanted to see what I loved last year, because I'm still using so many of those products, I'll have the 2020 playlist in the description box as well. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ali, and I would love for you to join the family. You can do so by hitting the subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, but you wanna be notified on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, click on the bell after you subscribe and you'll get a notification every single time I post. That's it for me today. I hope you guys have an amazing day wherever you are, and I will see you in my next video. Love you. Oh!